Chapter 13, Ocular Gonorrhea. It is convenient to group in one chapter infectious gonorrheal conjunctivitis and the ocular lesions of systemic gonorrhea. Though the relations between them are anatomic and biologic, but not clinical, the gonococcus does not invade the system from the conjunctiva. Infectious gonorrheal conjunctivitis. The frequency of gonorrheal conjunctivitis in infants and its rarity in adults has been mentioned in chapter 10. The infection is due to contact with gonorrheal pus derived from the mother's genitalia during parturition or in afterlife from contact with dirty fingers. Symptoms. The incubation period is believed to be from 12 to 48 hours in adults. In infants, the inflammation first shows itself on the third or fourth day. In adults, one eye is usually spared if properly protected, but in infants, the lesion is commonly bilateral. The onset is hyperacute as a rule. The subjective symptoms of burning and itching are promptly exchanged for intense and constant pain. The lids are intensely red and swollen. They must be forced apart to obtain a view of the globe. The ocular conjunctiva is intensely inflamed and so swollen that it overhangs the cornea, which thus seems sunk into the depths of the globe. The subconjunctival edema soon interferes with the circulation of the cornea, which is usually more or less necrosed. This corneal necrosis or ulceration, if situated near the periphery, may be concealed during the acute attack by the overhanging conjunctiva. The pain completely exhausts the patient, but there is no fever. The corneal destruction results in opacities, which, if central, destroy the vision. Perforation of the cornea results in prolapse and involvement of the iris. Iridic adhesions may occur without perforation. Prognosis. The infection, though rarer, is usually much more severe in adults than in infants. The sight of an adult is rarely saved. That of an infant often is. The duration of the acute disease is from two to six weeks, a mild conjunctivitis persisting as long again. It may leave a pseudotrachoma. Corneal destruction is often far less than would be expected from the intensity of the inflammation. Glaucoma may supervene in a badly damaged eye. If an eye is destroyed by gonorrheal or other purulent inflammation, the danger of sympathetic inflammation of the opposite eye is very slight, if it ever occurs. Nap. It is not therefore proper to remove the stump for fear of this dreaded complication, a fact well to bear in mind, because a shriveled stump of an eye furnishes a base of support for an artificial eye. Diagnosis. Almost every hyperacute purulent conjunctivitis is gonorrheal, and almost every gonorrheal conjunctivitis is purulent. The microscope determines the diagnosis. There is a pseudogonorrheal conjunctivitis neonatorum of relatively mild type, not uncommon in institutions. This accounts for a large percentage of cases. Prophylaxis. An antiseptic should be dropped into the eyes of every child at birth. There are no exceptions to this rule of practice. The antiseptic usually instilled is 2% silver nitrate, as advised by Creday. The adult exercises prophylaxis by keeping his fingers clean and out of his eyes. I have never known a case of gonorrheal conjunctivitis in my private practice. Treatment. The sick room should be kept dark, the patient in bed. Local treatment must be properly instituted. Delay may jeopardize the eye. The essentials of treatment are three. One, antiphlogosis, cold. Two, cleanliness, irrigation. Three, antiseptics, bactericides. The greatest possible care is necessary in handling the tender, swollen eye no pressure is allowable. All dressing should be the lightest possible and tenderly placed by a delicate hand. The swollen upper lid is already weight enough. The utmost care should be used in protecting the sound eye from contagion. 
Buller's shield, a watch glass set into perforated squares of rubber plaster, is not so good as Knapp's suggestion, a mica spectacle plate, to be obtained from any optician, fastened on with rubber plaster strips. This is transparent, very light, and does not steam. All operative measures are categorically contraindicated during the active period of the disease. Cold applications are of the utmost importance. Their application must be unremitting night and day, and for this reason, two or even three trained nurses are necessary. Thin compresses chilled in ice water should be placed upon the closed lid, being renewed about every five minutes, night and day. The cold must not be too intense during the decreasing stage as it may interfere with the nutrition of the cornea, an interference which manifests itself by a misty appearance commencing at the center of the cornea. Should this be noticed, the cold application must be stopped at once. Cleanliness and antisepsis must be constantly assured by gently separating the lids and freely instilling with a dropper, not a syringe for fear of spattering the pus into the eye of the attendant. Argyrol in such strength as the patient can bear, usually 20%, a few minims being dropped into the inflamed eye every half hour or every hour until the acute inflammation begins to subside and the discharge becomes mucopurulent. Thereafter, 2% nitrate of silver solution is applied once or twice a day until gonococci can no longer be found in the secretions.